Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Do you have this sometimes as well that you read a book and the writing is good, the story is not bad either, but still something irks you, something rubs you completely the wrong way? Well, when this happens to me most of the time, the book has a trope, a cliché, a stereotype that just, just didn't work, at least not for me. And I thought this was a great theme for book reviews, so I wanted to start a new series, two-in-one book review, in which I compared two books, both of which have a trope, something familiar stereotype, like the love triangle, or the stalker who is actually in love, or in this case now, the woman scorned. This is a very familiar, old trope or cliche or stereotype, the woman who is left by her man and then completely loses grip on her life and her identity, exploding in rage and fury. And the phrase, hell has no fury, like a woman scorned, was coined by a playwright in the late 17th century, William Congreve, in a play of his, The Morning Bride, in which one of the characters, he has one of the characters say the phrase. So the first book that centers around this familiar cliché is Elena Ferrante's The Days of Abandonment. The book is about Olga, who one evening at dinner is confronted by her husband telling her that he will leave. And the rest of the book is about how Olga deals, or not, with this, this sudden abandonment. Olga and her husband have two young children and Olga all of a sudden has to care for her children, which she can't do anymore. She completely loses her grip. Uh, she, she gets furious. And although the story is well written and what I really liked about the book was the fact how honest, in a way, the author could describe Olga's rage and fury. But still, it, it something irked me. It was as if the author was telling me this is the way all women behave. And I was starting to think, why, why is that? Why is that sometimes these kind of cliches have give me at least the feeling as if they were told in a way that this is the way it's, it's, it's supposed to be? And I think the problem that I had with this book in particular, but with other books as well where that happens to me, is that the main character from which, whose point of view we see and who is living the trope doesn't feel for me as an individual character. It feels like a cardboard person, in this case a cardboard woman, and the cliché or the stereotype is just put on top of her without the feeling that the way the woman acts is grounded in her individuality. So the stereotype is not grounded in this particular person because a book should not just tell the story of all women, uh, but it should tell the story of one particular woman and we should understand why this particular woman acts in the way she does. And for me, in the days of abandonment, although it was really well written, it just didn't work. The woman didn't give me the idea, Olga didn't give me the idea that it's explainable from her individual character that she acts in this way. So I think one particular problem with tropes is that if they don't work, if the author is not capable of individualizing the trope, of making us believe that this particular character actually acts the way he or she does. Um, there are other criticisms possible, by the way, about the days of abandonment. I read a really funny and intelligent article um, in the Open Letter Monthly from 
reviewer. I will leave a link to this review down below if you are interested. And by the way, you should check out Open Letter, uh, Open Letters Monthly because it's a really great online literary magazine. But this doesn't mean that a trope cannot work in general, obviously. And an example of the same trope, the woman scorned, the woman left by her husband and losing it, is another book I've read some time ago and reread now for, for this video, and that's The Summer Without Man by Siri Hustvedt. In this book, we have the same story in a way. We have Mia, the main character, who all of a sudden is left by her husband Boris, and on top of the trope, not only left all of a sudden, but left for a younger, women, a younger woman. But still, this time the story works. First of all, because Hustvedt does exactly what Ferrante doesn't, didn't do, individualizing the story. We understand why, all, why Mia acts the way she does. And she really acts because she's getting psychotic, she's committed to a hospital for some time and then she leaves the city to spend the summer with her mother, surrounded by other women, hence the summer without men. And there are two other things, apart from the individualization, uh, why the summer without men works with this trope. And that's first self-reflection, we see the character Mia reflecting on her behavior, realizing that she is acting out something that is a stereotype. And the second thing why it really works is humor. The book is really funny. At times it, it's hilarious how Mia describes her relationship to Boris and the way she pictures in her head him having sex with his new girlfriend. So these two additional uh, criteria or aspects of a book, self-reflection of the main character's point of view and humor, I think make The Summer Without Man a book in which this trope works perfectly. And I urge you to read it because it's certainly one of my favorite Hustvedt's book. And it's, it's a great read and really funny. So these were the two books in which I explore a familiar trope and I'm obviously curious to hear what you think of tropes, whether they work for you or not, or whether they work in some cases and not in others. Also, of course, leave comments if you have read either of the two books and have a different point of view than I do. Um, and also whether you like this idea of a two-in-one book review in which I explore a certain cliche or stereotype and compare two books. This was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.